What is going on everybody, Zionic here. And in today's video, we're gonna dive into the Tempest Cup team that I have chosen for this tournament and really go deep into why I chose certain Pokemon and how you can implement these decisions for your own team. Now, before we actually dive right into this, I do want to let you guys know that things are subject to change because we saw last month that Niantic released a PVP update that gave Silverwind and Ominous Wind a crazy buff for Pokemon that were used in the Twilight Cup. So we may see similar things happen for this tournament. So I'm holding off on using uh, the big Stardust cost of unlocking second charge moves on these Pokemon that I have on my team in case something else really starts to shine with an update. But if no update happens when my tournament happens, this will be the team that I go into the tournament with. And after I show you guys how you can build your own team and why I chose the team that I have, we're gonna dive into a few matches with the Tempest Cup team that I have chosen. Now while I was recording this, Pokemon Go Game Press released a beautiful infograph on the Tempest Cup meta. So I highly suggest you guys head over to their Twitter account and take a look at this image because it's very simplified and it's, it's spot on for what this Tempest Cup meta is gonna involve. So let's go ahead and dive right into the drafting of my Tempest Cup team. Now diving right into the Tempest Cup draft for my own team, guys. Um, I created this infograph for you guys to help simplify um, my drafting strategy and why I choose the Pokemon that I do. Now the first tip that I would have in choosing the first Pokemon for this tournament is to definitely look at what's very strong, um, but also maybe something that you really like or something you have available that falls within um, the Tempest Cup meta that you saw in that infograph um, from the beginning of the video. So the first Pokemon that I'm gonna choose is a personal favorite of mine, and it's it's really strong right now, and I have a feeling it's gonna get nerfed in the coming months, possibly even weeks. But for right now, I'm gonna have him on my team, and that's gonna be Tropius. And it doesn't come as a surprise, guys. You've seen from my other videos, I love Tropius. It's very strong. Um, and right here you can see that on the left, Tropius gets is weak against Skarmory, who is a great wall for Tropius. It's weak against Altaria because Altaria um, has the amazing move of Dragon Breath, which just destroys Tropius along with having Sky Attack and not taking super effective damage from Tropius. So it's going to beat Tropius. And then Tropius is also weak to Ice. And there's a lot of Ice Pokemon, so I just put the Ice symbol there. Um, but do note that Tropius can beat a lot of the Ice Pokemon toe-to-toe -to -toe if he sh does a shield. Um, so that is something to note. The reason why I have him on my team is for other Pokemon that we will see in this tournament. He's going to be strong against the Water Ground meta, so your Whizcash, your uh, Quagsire, Marsh Stomp. He's going to be very strong against them. He's going to be very strong against Lantern. And Lantern is going to be, I think, a Pokemon you're going to see on a lot of teams, the majority of teams. Lantern is very good for this tournament, and he's very strong against it. Um, and then he's also strong against Pokemon like Alolan Graveler. Um, where he Alolan Graveler is going to take super effective damage from Tropius. Um, so Tropius can be utilized very well. And even if you actually don't use him in the fight, it's a huge deterrent for people who come into a tournament with a Whizcash and a Marsh Stomp on their team because that's what they had from the Boulder Cup. So moving on to my next pick. It's a Pokemon um, that I just talked about, and that's going to be Lantern. And Lantern is, is very good in the sense that it's strong against a lot of Pokemon um, that we will see in this tournament. Um, it's going to be strong against Skarmory, it's going to be strong against Lapras, it's going to be strong against Charizard, um, because I'm going to go with Water Gun as a fast move, Thunderbolt, and Hydro Pump as my charge moves. Um, but Lantern does need to watch out for Abomasnow and Tropius, because specifically they need to watch out for that Razor Leaf fast move. It will absolutely destroy a Lantern. And then Lantern also needs to kind of watch out for the Water Ground meta, because ground type attack moves are going to do super effective damage to Lantern. Um, so that's kind of where that falls in. So then having Lantern to cover um, Skarmory and Charizard and Lapras, which can do super effective damage to Tropius, well, Tropius is able to not only counter a Lantern, but also cover 
um, one of Lantern's biggest weaknesses, which is the water ground meta. So that's why I chose Lantern as my second, is because those two pair pretty well together. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go into the third pick, which is gonna be Lapras. But Lapras has options. Um, if you happen to have a legacy Lapras with maybe uh, Ice Beam as a charge move, it's gonna be able to do super effective damage to Tropius. So even though it is weak to Tropius, it can counter Tropius, um, which is an amazing thing to have. And then on top of that, Having Water Gun as a fast move with Surf as a charge move along with Ice Beam, it's going to be able to cover um, some Ice Pokemon that would otherwise destroy um, Atropius if you have no shields or whatnot. So like Pillow Swine, having Water Gun and Surf, it's going to do a lot of work to Pillow Swine and definitely is a great counter for Charizard and Rhyperior. And Lapras is just super bulky. Um, and it also does very well against Altaria with those ice moves as well. So that's why I'm going to have Lapras on my team. Now, the next Pokemon I'm going to choose is going to be Skarmory. And I have Skarmory here as a basically a pure wall for Atropius. Um, because with these picks, not only um, are they strong picks, but it's also strong psychological picks. Um, because... If someone comes into a game, when you're looking at someone's lineup, you have to determine not only what Pokemon will they use, but what Pokemon they have that will do super effective damage to your own team. So if you have a lot of the heavy hitter counters, um, people are going to start second guessing their choices and that's where mistakes are made. So I have Skarmory on here as my wall for Tropius. But then um, it's also going to do pretty well with Flash Cannon to be able to cover those Ice type Pokemon and also be able to cover um, a Pokemon like Rhyperior, who they are all going to be weak to Steel type moves. So a Skarmory with uh, Air Slash and Flash Cannon and Sky Attack is going to perform really well, not only walling Tropius, but doing well against the Ice meta. Now moving on to my fifth pick, I'm going to have Steelix. And Steelix is just, I think it's just very bulky and very um, well-rounded in the sense that it can take on some of the tankier Pokemon or the high damage Pokemon we're going to see in this tournament. So as you see on the right, as an example, it's going to do very well against Altaria. So a Steelix with Dragon Tail as a fast move, along with Crunch and either um, Earthquake or Heavy Slam, and I'll get into the options for that in a second. Dragon Tail is going to do super effective damage to Altaria. And Altaria and Skarmory, having the charge move spam of Sky Attack is not going to do anything really to Steelix. So Steelix doing Dragon Tails and Crunches is going to handle those Pokemon very well. Um, and he's also going to handle the Electric um, meta. Because Electric type moves are not going to do super effective damage to Steelix. So he's going to handle them very well. But on the flip side... Pokemon that he does need to look out for is going to be Charizard, is going to be Celio, and Lantern. But the, there's a very interesting thing when it comes to Lantern that you guys should definitely watch out for in your own tournament is Lantern doing um, Water Gun and Hydro Pump, right, is going to take a while to charge up that Hydro Pump. And when you're fighting against a Steelix, trying to get that Hydro Pump to do super effective damage, he's going to be doing right his moves as well which take a little bit of time to charge but if a steelix has an earthquake instead of a heavy slam and you decide not to shield that earthquake from a steelix versus as your lantern he's going to do super effective damage and pretty much one shot that lantern so instead of being a direct counter he just direct countered you um, so i'm kind of in the toss-up of which which move i want to take because having heavy slam as a charge move will cover Ice Pokemon, but having Earthquake is a surprise move that people may not be ready for, especially when they have a Lantern on their team. And the final Pokemon I'm going to have on my team is going to be Altaria. And Altaria's, just like Tropius's fast move, Altaria's fast move of Dragon Breath is broken, guys. It does so much damage. Um, Altaria is going to be able to wall uh, a Tropius. It's going to be able to completely take out the Water Ground meta. And it's going to be able to do a lot of work against a Lantern. But Altaria's weakness is going to be Ice Pokemon. Um, so Pokemon like Frostless, like Legacy Lapras, like Pillow Swine. They're going to be doing super effective damage to an Altaria. 
So as you guys see here, I'm choosing Pokemon um, that cover each other and then I can pair in multiple different ways because when you come across a lineup like this, I can go with any team of three um, and it's going to be really hard to figure out which way I'm going to go. But on top of that, Pokemon that I have can cover a wide variety um, of the meta that we are going to see. Um, so this this meta is the, the closest thing that we've had to a free-for-all style tournament where any Pokemon goes because everything here is a check and balance. You're definitely going to want, you don't want to be heavy on one side, so you want to have a good balance on your, your tournament team. And this isn't um, a perfect team, guys. There is no such thing as the perfect Tempest Cup team. What there is is a balanced team and that's what you guys need to strive for so what i would suggest when you go through your own choosing of pokemon is to start with one pokemon like i started with tropius i find my weaknesses and i find my strengths and then i choose pokemon to support that other pokemon so with tropius being weak to skarmory which is a big wall i chose lantern which is going to be a big wall to a skarmory um, and then from there we just kept going doing checks and balances all the way down. So moving into this first game, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and lead with my Lapras, and my Lapras right now is a Legacy Lapras. It has Ice Shard and Ice Beam, um, and I'm holding off on unlocking a second charge move of Surf um, until a later date of, you know, roughly right before I enter the tournament. So going against this Pillow Swine, um, she was lagging a little bit there, so I did stop some attacks. We're gonna go ahead and get this Ice Beam off. Look at how much damage that's doing. Now, Ice Beam is going to do very well in this tournament, especially against Tropius and Altaria. And we're not going to block that Avalanche because it's not going to do a lot of damage. Lapras is going to be a great option to go against other Ice-type Pokemon, especially if you have Water Gun as a fast move. So she brings in Skarmory. We're going to go ahead and get this Ice Beam off. She does block that. And we're going to keep Lapras in here. Just keep trying to put in work, trying to get off another Ice Beam. Um, so we go for it, but she gets her flash cannon off. So we're gonna go ahead and shield this And now that we have a lot of stored energy, I'm gonna go ahead and swap into Steelix um, And Steelix is gonna be a great option versus a Skarmory um, as you can just spam crunches And it's just gonna kind of slowly beat it up um, and take it down because it's not gonna take super effective damage from sky attack or flash cannon Not very effective Steelix is just doing work so we're going to go ahead and get this last crunch off to try to finish off this Skarmory. And we do finish off the Skarmory. Um, so she brings an Altaria. And notice, guys, she has an Altaria. And I have a Lapras still in the back with an Ice Beam ready to go. So we're going to try to burn a shield here with Crunch. We do get the shield. So I'm very happy right now because I know I can bring this Lapras in, get off the Ice Beam, and completely eliminate this Altaria. So I'm going to go right into Lapras with the Ice Beam. Charge it up. Boom game over that's oh so strong if you can find if you can get an ice beam go ahead and get an ice beam guys so we're gonna go ahead and get into the next game i'm gonna go with the same team and i'm really liking this team comp that i have here um, um just through the testing i've been doing and we have steelix versus altaria this was a matchup that i talked about earlier where um, Steelix can go toe to toe with Altaria because it does have um, uh, Dragon Tail and it's not going to take super effective damage from the Sky Attack. Um, so it's a very bulky option when it comes to Altaria, but as you guys see, Dragon Breath is just so, it's so broken. It does so much damage so fast. Um, so we do get this crunch off. Uh, she does decide to shield, which is great. I'm using Steelix to kind of chunk down this Altaria while burning shields. Um, but Steelix go does go down. So we're going to go ahead and bring in Lapras. Legacy Lapras with Ice Shard. That's uh, Altaria gone. So the next Pokemon she brings in is a Skarmory. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get off this Ice Beam. Try to burn that last shield. We don't burn the shield, but we do a lot of damage with that Ice Beam, guys. Ice Beam is going to be huge in this tournament. Um, so we're going to go ahead and block this Flash Cannon. Um, and then just keep plugging away. Get off this Ice Beam. Hopefully she sh she shields here. We do burn the final shield here. And we're going to go ahead and try to finish off this Skarmory with fast attacks before it can hit us again. And we do. And now she's bringing in a Pokemon with no chance to block this Ice Beam, which is going to be a Charizard. And that's a lot of health gone, guys. 
Um, so we're gonna go ahead and keep getting these ice shards off. She does take me down, but that's okay because we have Altaria. Um, we're gonna go ahead and block this with our final shield. It is a blast burn, and Charizard's dead. Um, so a great second round, and we're gonna go ahead and move into round three. So moving into round three, I'm going in with Tropius as a lead with Skarmory and Lapras. Now this is something you guys may come across a lot of, which is the Tropius on Tropius fight. Um, and something I would suggest is that Tropius is weak to flying type moves and it does have access to Aerial Ace as a charge move, which is going to do super effective damage. So if you can manage to unlock a second charge move, I would definitely do so. But we're not going to be blocking these Leaf Blades because it's not going to do really anything to us. So we're just going to keep using that Razor Leaf, keep getting off these Leaf Blades. But I'm going to want to switch here soon um, because I want to store up some energy. But she decides to switch first, so she switches into Skarmory, so I'm going to switch into Skarmory again. So now we have a Skarmory on Skarmory fight. And I didn't want to leave my Tropius in there, and the fact that she switched gave me the advantage to then switch back out so I can keep my Tropius at a high health. So I'm going to go ahead and get off this Sky Attack. And this is something you guys have seen in the Boulder Cup. It's just the Skarmory fight. Not very exciting um, at all. And I think the fact that she doesn't have Sky Attack yet, um, she has Flash Cannon, which she's waiting to unlock a second charge move as well. Um, so it's not really the pure matchup you're going to see, um, because Sky Attack does go off faster than Flash Cannon. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get this Sky Attack off, um, nearly finish the Skarmory. So the Skarmory does go down, and she still has her Tropius, but then she also has an Alolan Ninetales. So we're going to go ahead and bail out of there, go into Lapras, because Lapras is going to do well against Alolan Ninetales. Um, she does Dazzling Gleam, which actually does a lot of damage. Um, so I should have probably shielded that, but we're going to go ahead and go into Ice Beam. She blocks that, and she's really wanting to take the advantage here, um, trying to make me burn my last shield, which she does. I'm going to give that to her. So I'm going to go ahead and block that, and now I'm going to go into another Ice Beam. She doesn't have any shields um, to block that, and so now we're kind of taking the advantage here. She might get off this last Dazzling Gleam, and she does. So Lapras goes down, but I'm going to bring in Tropius, and Tropius is just going to one-tap. One-tap the Ninetales. See you, Ninetales. Um, she brings in her Tropius. And this is great, guys, because remember, I still have that Skarmory left. So I'm going to go ahead and get off this Leaf Blade. And Skarmory has that Sky Attack ready to go. So we're going to bail out, go right into Skarmory, right into Sky Attack, and finish off this game. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video, and I hope it helps you out in building your own Tempest Cup team. And remember that just because I chose these Pokemon doesn't mean you can't use other Pokemon. What's really important is having a well-rounded team that can cover all the meta Pokemon that we are going to see in this tournament. And I want to thank you guys so much for all the support that you guys have shown my videos and my channel and all the feedback that you guys have been giving me. It's been an amazing couple weeks creating content for you guys that you really enjoy. And because of that, I've been able to talk to other YouTubers who are also very heavily involved in Pokemon Go PvP content. And we're going to start to collaborate on videos and come out with battles against each other, doing live streams uh, in the coming months. So shout out to all these guys that you're seeing on my friends list right now, as it's going to be a very fun April tournament because we're going to be ultra friends by then. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. And for those of you who are really wanting to fight against me, or fight against other very competitive people like yourself, I do have something in the works for that to happen. So just be patient and stay tuned. I'm hoping to announce that this weekend for you guys. Um, it's something completely free and I think it's gonna be really amazing for the, the competitive community um, as a whole. Like always guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.